Hey guys, welcome back to Luke's Goldies. Today I'm going to be going over what you need to set up a rancher tank. And honestly, any goldfish tank for that matter. Alright, so before I get into the details of the video, obviously in this video I'm going to cover all the different things you're going to need for a tank. Uh, let me just list off the things I'm going to cover and say if they're necessary or optional. So, you know, a good sized tank, over 25 gallons, necessary. A uh, good powerful filtration, necessary. A water heater, Somewhat optional, but I would highly recommend it. Uh, plants and decor, optional. Substrate, optional. Lights, optional. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a tank. And I generally say the minimum tank size you're gonna want is around 25 gallons, though the bigger, the better. So, and I'm also doing this for two ranch of goldfish. You do wanna get two ranch of goldfish if you're gonna keep goldfish. It's better to keep them with a friend. They are social creatures. They do like to interact with each other. Uh, but yeah, I'd say a bare minimum is 25 gallons for, for two ranchos, just because that's the minimum requirement. At least they need to swim around. Uh, but again, if you can do a bigger tank, do a bigger tank. The bigger the better, there's really no limit on that. Uh, the only thing I would make sure when a tank when you're getting it is you don't want a tank that's extremely tall, two, three, four feet tall. Uh, that high pressure of having a very, very tall tank is going to really weigh on the rancho and really kind of negatively affect them. Ranchers used to prefer to have more shallow water. So if you got a shallower tank and a longer tank, or just a shallower tank and a wider and longer tank, uh, they're definitely gonna like that more than a very vertical tank that has a lot of water height. That's gonna be a lot of water pressure for the rancher. The second thing you're really gonna need is a powerful filter. So you could have a hang on back filter and you could also have a sponge filter and you could also do both. I, on my 55 gallon tank, I use both a hang on back and multiple sponge filters. Uh, a hang on back filter is typically going to be able to filter more water per hour. It's going to be able to hold a little big, bigger of a bio load, uh, but you can get away with doing only sponge filters as long as you have enough in the, in the aquarium and you, know, you, you clean them out when they need to be cleaned out. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need a good sized tank, you're going to need a filter, and here's the thing, plants and decorations. Here's my opinion on plants and decorations. You can have uh, fake decor and you can have plants, but they're not really necessary. They're not 100% necessary. Uh, most goldfish breeders, people that raise goldfish for like their job, they don't really generally use decorations in their big ponds where they, where they grow their goldfish out. Uh, but absolutely, there are benefits to having plants. Uh, plants help keep the water cleaner. Plants can over the long term reduce the amount of maintenance you need. Uh, but in my opinion, there's no real benefit to having fake decor. So fake plants, those little SpongeBob hideouts, all those things, uh, those only serve as something that's going to be hazardous for the fish. Uh, Rancher goldfish are very slow, Rancher goldfish are very clumsy, and when you have big plastic objects, sometimes with jagged edges in there, uh, those things are not going to clean the water, those things are not going to give them any you know, kind of help besides being in their way and kind of being uh, a hazard for them because they'll bump into them, they'll, they'll, they'll lose their scales, they'll get stuck in them, they're clumsy creatures. So uh, I would actually, I would advise against fake decor. You can do it and there, there's, there's times you can do it to make it safe, but I would advise against decor. Plants are good if you're going to maintain them uh, and not let them die and rot. I would say plants are good too. You can add some plants in there. All right, let's talk about substrate. So you can easily do no substrate. You can have the bottom of the aquarium be completely glass and that's perfectly fine for the goldfish. Uh, it's actually probably going to make it a little bit easier to keep the water clean and that will actually help the goldfish in the long run. Um, you could also do sand. Uh, I like to use a magitarian black sand. I'll have, I actually have that linked to my website if you want to check it out. Uh, I found it's the cheapest kind of large grain sand you can use and I like to use a little bit of a large grain because it's not as easily kicked up and you know gets the water messy and dirty uh, but it also is something the goldfish can kind of swim around in all day and pick it up in their mouth and spit it out uh, I, I think they kind of enjoy having the sand um, and here's the thing you could use gravel but there is a risk with gravel there is a risk possibly that the goldfish could get gravel stuck in their mouth now I'll be honest I've used gravel for three or four years, and I've actually never had that happen to me. I've had gravel small enough that they could suck it in their mouth and spit it out, and I've never had a goldfish get it lodged in their mouth. But I have heard of it happening, uh, and it is a risk. And one of the downsides of gravel is that, unlike sand or, or bare bottom, there's 
debris and poop that can get trapped underneath the gravel. For sand, sand is kind of fine enough that stuff doesn't really get trapped underneath it that much. And obviously on a bare bottom, nothing can get trapped on a bare bottom. Uh, but gravel, you will you will have to clean it, you know, every so often because stuff gets stuff gets easily trapped below it. Um, so the one benefit, biggest benefit of having gravel or sand is they hold extra bacteria. So there'll be uh, all kinds of beneficial bacteria in the bed of that ground, and uh, that will help to keep the system a little more stable. You'll be able to do a little bit larger volume water changes without having to worry because there will be more bacteria in the system. It'll be a more stable system that can handle larger bio load. Um, but the effect is not massive. It, there is an effect, but it's not massive. And uh, if you want to go with a little easier route, I would just say go bare bottom. Now, another thing I want to talk about is heater. Uh, does a goldfish require a heater? Well, I wouldn't say they require it, but I, I will say that for the fancier varieties especially, uh, I'd say it's better to have a water heater. Now, they are cold. They call them cold water fish. They don't need to be in warm water. They can go low 60s and they'll thrive in low 60s. Uh, but I found when I up the temperature to around you know 74, 75, uh, they really thrive at 75 degrees. And uh, if you have a, if you live in an area where it gets kind of cold in the winter, I would honestly recommend having it, especially if you know if you're worried about a fish getting sick for a hospital tank. You're absolutely going to need a heater to put in a hop and put in a hospital tank for treating a sick fish. Um, you get faster growth. I feel like it's less likely to get infections in the first place with a heater. And uh, I feel like the fish are less likely to have constipation and swim bladder problems with a heater. So overall, I would say yes, get a heater. But if you're on a low budget and you can't afford it, it's not 100% necessary. They can still thrive without a heater. All right, let's talk about stocking. So I don't really believe that there is a rule of thumb as it goes for stocking. I've heard some people say 10 gallons per goldfish. I've some, heard some other people say you know 50 or 80 gallons per goldfish, crazy stuff like that. Uh, I really think that at the end of the day, it comes down to if you can keep your water parameters in check. So you could overstock a tank if you overstock the filtration, you have extra filtration on there, and you do a lot more water changes, or you pack the thing full of plants and you have like an aquaponic system going. Um, but you know, I've successfully kept, you know, even up to like five or six or seven goldfish in a 55 gallon tank but I had to do you know, a lot of water changes. I had to do, I had to make sure I had multiple filters on there. Right now on my tank right now, I have like four sponge filters and a hang on back filter just to make sure that the water is extremely nice and clean. Uh, basically at the end of the day, uh, it's hard to put too much filtration in a tank. You know, you wanna make sure there's not too high of a water flow rate that's gonna disturb the, the ranch use. But I would definitely say overdo, overdo the filtration and do water changes more often than you think and make sure you're testing the water to make sure make sure your nitrates are low uh, and you can basically continually add fish until you notice things are going off and you say okay maybe i have to return some fish to the store or i should not get any more fish because i'm at a point where uh, my nitrates are at a pretty good level but if i added more fish i would they would end up spiking and i wouldn't be able to maintain it but uh, basically high filtration and high amount of water changes can solve an overstocking problem also, a very important thing you should know before you go and throw some rancher goldfish in the tank you just bought, uh, your filters and your whole tank as a system has to be cycled before you add fish to a system. And a cycle tank basically means that there is an established bacteria colony within the filter and within the whole tank itself that's able to take the, the bio load from the fish. So one thing you can do is you can actually buy bottled bacteria online. Now they say that you can add fish immediately with this bottled bacteria. Uh, I don't really think that's true. What you do want to do is you want to add a bunch of the bottled bacteria and wait a little bit, throw a little bit of you know random food in there, let it rot and let the system kind of take care of it. And then put one fish in a time and slowly increase your bio load you know, over the span of a week or two, maybe even longer, depending on how big your tank is and how big your bio load is going to be. But uh, definitely go check out, they have bottled nitrifying bacteria, and that's the bacteria you need to basically turn the ammonia into the nitrate to make sure the system is safe for fish. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is lights. So do you need lights on an aquarium? I would say yes, it's better for the rancher to have some lights. Uh, if you live in a pretty well lit room, maybe you don't need lights, but uh, it, it looks nice in the tank and you know, kind of helps the rancher you see well. So you are gonna wanna give them some sort of light exposure during the day. Uh, the longer amount you have light on, the more you're gonna encourage breeding, the shorter the amount of light you have on, 
the more you're going to discourage breeding. Uh, but also something to know if you have light on for a long time during the day, uh, you're more likely to get algae growth. So if you don't want to get algae growth, I'd recommend putting it a little bit shorter during the day. But then again, algae does not harm the fish. Algae is no, you know, real, doesn't cause any negative effect on the fish, but doesn't make your tank look a little bit ugly. Uh, but yeah, lights, you can add them if you want. If your room is bright enough, then I don't really see a need for them, but they do, look, they do make the tank look nice. So those are basically the things you're going to need to set up, you know, your first little rancher tank. Uh, or any goldfish tank for that matter. But uh, I would also highly recommend do your research uh, on top of watching this video. Um, you also wanna know everything about their diet needs, uh, everything about water change schedules, what you should do to respond to certain infections and diseases. Uh, but this is just a video for you to kind of gain an understanding of what you're gonna need to set up a rancher tank. I have been asked a lot, oh, how do I set up a tank? How do I set up a tank? So this is just a little guide. Uh, for to help you, you know, good size tank, uh, good size filtration, and you know, stock. The lower your stock and the larger your tank, the easier it's going to be for you. But I know some people out there that are willing to do a water change every two days. If you're willing to do that, then you could get even more fish in a smaller tank. Uh, but for the amateur, new, beginner keeper, I'd recommend getting the biggest tank possible with the least amount of stock. It's going to make your life easier, and most probably because most of you guys out there are probably not going to be doing water changes every like every couple days. Uh, definitely going to probably make your fish last a little longer too. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to figure out the stuff I use in my tank, uh, I actually have it linked on my website. So go to my website, look at my recommended products. I have all the products I use there. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.